Hey, it's Kellen. Today on Diversified Game, we're getting game all the way from the UK. We're going to take you from the UK to Nigeria. And with Tyro Oro Shimi, you are going to think maybe that she's even in Japan. But we're going to talk about that too. And let me know the correlation between Yoruba and Japanese. Tyro, welcome to the show. Hi, Kellen. Nice to, uh, nice to, you know, for having me here. Thank you very much. Thank you for coming on. Um, I saw you on Dynasty Mirror's show, and that's, you know, one of um, our, our guys who shows us Nigeria like nobody else over here yeah. in the States. And, and what you were talking about was just, you know, it's right up the alley of what you know, the year return was one thing, but you've been doing the Global African Investors Alliance, which all that information, you guys, is in the description box, whether you're listening on the, our popular podcast or our not so popular YouTube, but it's growing. Um, let me know, uh, the Global African Investors Alliance, when did you start this? Okay. I actually started Global African Investors Alliance about um, uh, three months ago, three, four okay. months ago. And the reason why I started it was uh, because I have been in, you know, dealing with real estate investment in the UK since 2010. And uh, I've been very, very successful at it. And um, I decided that uh, I should take my skills, uh, my knowledge, and uh, use that, you know, to help the African diaspora, you know, to go back home. So I actually hunted on Dinah Samir's first tour to Nigeria back in uh, August. Was it August? Yes, back in August 2019, last year. And um, he was kind enough to show me around, to show us, you know, the group around, everything I wanted to know. Because for a long, long time, I had been, you know, detached, more or less, physically detached, but not spiritually detached from the motherland since I was 10 years old. So uh, as an adult and as, as um, somebody that was ready to make the move, you know, to Africa, um, I hunted on his tour and he showed me everything that I needed to, to see. And that tour actually clarified for me how I wanted to take my business back home and which angles I can use that will work over there. So uh, because obviously the way of setting up businesses here is not the same over there. So um, that tour was what I used to you know, uh, define and smooth, you know, uh, my business. And um, that's when I started Global African Investors, really. Wow. So it's, uh, it's fresh. I mean, this is a new project for you. And, you know, just so you guys know, this young woman, when you watch, I'm not going to repeat what Dynas had said, because you guys need to go to the search for a Ruru and check that interview out. But she, in, I mean, she retired at 35 and retirement as an entrepreneur means you, you never really retire as an entrepreneur. You just start more businesses. You do different things. You, you know, you learn how to give more and live more on more on your time because we all know life as an entrepreneur isn't just you do whatever the heck you want <laughs> you have to work hard and i'm sure you're still putting in the work what are some of the first steps that you took to you know start making those relationships after going on that uh tour to reconnect relationships with uh with who exactly with, with like businesses because you just don't do real estate and we're going to get into the real estate folks because she you know is gonna she wants to become the queen of real estate in nigeria victoria island is going to be hers and all of Af and all of africa um yeah. but what were the like your first steps because somebody will hear this and say wow that's possible. And I want to really give them like, what were your first steps? Because that's the hardest part is making your connections and the boots on ground. Right. Okay. The first step really is just uh, jumping the boat 
And the one thing that we in the diaspora have, and that perhaps the, the people, some people in Africa might not have, is the perspective of the two, you know, the two sides. Um, coming from the real estate investment in, uh, in the UK and being established here, I know I, I, I've got that, that you know, um, skills and that boldness to go out and just approach people. And, and you know, so the way I did it when I got to Nigeria was um, I found out that uh, there was a, a, an organization of real, real estate agents in Nigeria. So I looked at the registration of businesses in Nigeria and I looked underneath you know, real estate and I looked at which ones, um, the names that came up and I, I, um, I Googled them, I investigated them online. So I joined one of the biggest ones, which is called the Real Estate Millionaires and um, uh, met with one, you know, one of the, the founders, uh, spoke with, with her, and she introduced me to, you know, some of the, um, I, I went to their offices in Lagos. I saw, you know, how they were established and, and how they run their businesses. And I proceeded to make some purchases from them just to see how uh, they would treat me as a client. So um, actually, that was the first thing I did. Before I actually approached them in, in terms of working with them, I purchased some properties with them. And uh, the way they treated me as a client was just exceptional. You know, I, the service they gave me was, you know, even beyond the service I would receive here in Europe. So I bought some land with them. I bought some real estate with them. And uh, after that, I went to see them in their offices, you know, sat, sat, sat down with them and said, okay, how can we work together? Who are, the re who are the developers that you're working with? How did you um, vet them? Um, so I went, um, I went to see, they actually came with me to see some of the property developers that they work with and the reason why they work with them. And um, if you were to go on, my, um, on, the, on the YouTube page, Global African Investors Alliance, I actually interviewed you know, those, some of those real estate in the, um, property developers, I put them on there. So, um, so that's how I started really. And, uh, and then I've been, you know, we've been growing ever since, um, you know, a lot of people are very afraid to invest in real estate in Nigeria, which I completely understand. My mother, you know, was a victim of, you know, bad deal, dealing, you know, back, I would say back in two, back in 1990 ish, you know, she fell for a scam. But, uh, you know, uh, that is not the situation any longer here in Nigeria. The legal, the legal side of things are, are set up. You can, you know, investigate a company, you can find where they're registered before dealing you know, with them. So um, starting, it just, you just, just have to jump. That's it, really. And, and, and you know, I wasn't even gonna get into the 419 and talk about that, but there's that everywhere. There's scams here in the States. You can get caught up, especially if you're trying to take shortcuts. Um, I, I am the biggest collector of Nigerian movies in the U.S. who does not sell Nigerian movies. And so <laughs> if you're trying, you know, from VCD, from part A all the way to part D, G, all those, I have them all, right? And if you want to take shortcuts, you can find a way to get ripped off. But when you did buy your first properties to see how it worked, what was the... Um, you know, the, the budget that you worked with to give that clear vision, because, you know, on the state side, I'll say at least, um, we have a lot of people who say they want to invest in Africa, but they haven't even been. And some of, some of them have, you know, $2 in their pocket, but surprisingly, some of them may have a lot more, you know, in the bank or underneath the bed, but give them kind of like, what did you start with and how long did it take to uh, close the deal once you found something you like? Okay, so my first deal uh, was um, a plot of land in uh, Lagos, 
Um, because I was thinking, okay, I'm going to go to Nigeria and I'm going to build my dream home. So um, I bought a plot of land for 3.5 million uh, Naira, which is roughly about about um, probably eight eight thousand about eight thousand pounds, which would be roughly about maybe nine thousand US dollars. And you can do pounds. We'll let them do the conversion. I mean, you guys make eight thousand. <laughs> you guys make eight thousand pounds in a week when you go to the UK. Like you know, what, what are you know these pounds are just flowing, and we have to save up a whole year just to be able to shop and eat. So <laughs> yeah, you're, you're good. It's, <laughs> So that was my that was my first purchase, and then the second purchase was um, um, a, um, a, a a flat, a three bedroom, you know, penthouse in a new built book in an, in an estate. So uh, you know, for that you need to have a budget of probably about you know roughly thirty thousand uh, US dollars, no thirty thousand pounds for something like that. So, um, I mean, and then, you know, if, you, if your budget is not around that kind of price, uh, you can buy land outside Lagos and then you can, you, you can, you can buy, you know, land for, uh, for, for the price of um, a pair of Nike shoes, for example, which is what I've been, you know, advertising, which is what I actually advertised on Diners show. Um, for a pair of Nike, I think, you know, for less than $250, you can have a plot of farmland in some way in uh, Abeokuta, which is about an hour and a half drive from Lagos. Now, now let, let, let's go, because somebody will hear that and say, hold on, I have, you know, 20 pairs of Nike shoes, which a man, a man never needs 20 pairs of any type of shoes, but I have 20 Nikes, you mean I could have had, you know, plots and plots and plots. Um, in the States, there's deals like that in certain cities as well, but there's always these stipulations where like if you spend, you know, let, I'm going to say $500, I know in Lubbock, Texas, you spend 500 but then you have a short amount of time to get it out of a flood zone, which means you need another 5 k and then you need to build something on it. Africa, every country has its different rules. Every state can have its different rules. Are there any stipulations saying you have this amount of time to build something on it? No. When you buy a plot of land, um, it's uh, that is yours. That's it. You can, you know, all you need to do is just fence it, you know, um, and, um, and then when you're ready, you know, it's you when you're ready to build on it you build on it if you don't want to build on it if you want to keep it um let the um the price you know the the the, the, the equity appreciate over the years you can do that um uh, if you want to do something like what i'm doing you know i've bought uh, a few hectares of land of farmland and what i'm doing right now is um you know, um, uh, looking for, uh, we're dealing with some farmers to, you know, test the soil and uh, look at what exactly can grow in the, on there. And then, you know, use the farmers to, to grow the, 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 the crops and, um, you know, get somebody to manage the, the, the farm for me. I'm not going to be the one working on the farm, but I'll be working with farmers there. So it's, it's really up to you. It's what you, what you want to do. Do you want to build on it? Do you want to farm on it? Or do you just want to sit on it and just keep it? It's up to you. I, and I want to dig even deeper just because um, here in America, you can buy land. So I had a house in Texas, right? But because I live in the city limits, um, I don't have the mineral rights. So in that land, and I'd hate for your emails to be flooded and people say, oh, Nigeria is oil rich. So you mean I can start buying up all these pieces of land? Um, do they have the mineral rights as well? Oh, um, I'm not sure. I don't know. I've never investigated around that area, but I believe that what is yours on the ground is yours above ground. Okay. So, uh, yeah, so, you know, your land is yours. You can do whatever you need. Yes, it's, you know, I've, I've never heard of a case where you discover something, you know, beneath the, 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 the ground and then it com the government comes to, you know, confiscate it. No, what is yours is yours. 
Okay. And and these are the questions that I say, for, especially for Americans, because, you know, Americans, we have all these height limits on this can be this high. You'll have somebody trying to build their whole pyramid thinking they are really some type of king and say, you know, let me try to make a skyscraper all the way up to um, heaven because I can. Um, but no, that that is good to know. Now, your company can help facilitate these type of purchases. And I, I, someone can hear that and say, wait, let me go call her now. But people, there's always a fee to a service like that. So maybe the land is, you know, worth a pair of Nike shoes, but there's also a consultant fee. Being a consultant, I really want you to go deep into what those fees are because your time is valuable. In value. I mean, there's no price that they can put on your time, but what type of <laughs> fees can they look for to pay? Right. Um, at the moment, I uh, offer the first half an hour of communication over the phone. That's free. Okay. Obviously, um, you know, invest, you know, it, it, before I would get to the phone communication, I always ask people, you know, let's communicate by email first so that I can identify what exactly you're going, what exactly do you want? Because a lot of people, you know, will hear this podcast or hear my interview with Dennis and they get excited, you know, right, right off the boat, but they don't know exactly where they're going. They don't know what they want. They don't, I've got emails, people asking me, um, they want to invest in stocks and shares and bonds. And I'm like, I don't, I'm not a banker. I don't deal with, you know, that kind of things. I only deal with real estate and land acquisitions. So, you know, and these are people that just think that what I do in private, I do, I do deal with stocks and shares in private, but that's for my own investment. But I'm, I'm not going to, I do not, you know, sell that kind of skills. So what I want people to do is before getting in touch with me, because of the limited amount of time that I've got and the, the amount of people I deal with, I want people to go on the website and read very well, you know, the news section, the blog section, what it entails to invest in Nigeria. What are the different titles that we have? What, um, you know, are you prepared to go and visit or are you just, you know, speculating just to get yourself to, to give yourself some meaning. You know, I want to deal with people who are ready to go. So when someone sends me an email um, telling me I want to invest in a farmland, okay, you want to invest in a farmland. Have you been to my website? Have you have you you know located exactly which ones your budget can you know can cover? I'm not. Don't expect me to go into my website and then be sending you links. This is, I'm not trying to sell you anything. I'm giving you my time for free. So be very quick, be very accurate when you are, you know, when you're dealing with me. And this is, I, I, I don't want people to think that I'm being arrogant or, 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 or something. It's not being arrogant. I just want to weed out people that are going to waste my time. I'm here to help people who are ready to go. So, um, what, I'm, what, I, what I want people to know is that this is a service I'm, I'm, I'm offering to the diaspora. So when, when, during, during that conversation by, by email, once we've, we've fine-tuned what you want, what is your budget, are you ready to go, then you know, we can go to the telephone conversation, half an hour, that's fine. I will, do, I will answer all your questions, you know, that, that, would be, that would be done well with. However, you know, if somebody who needs more, you know, information, more convincing, more... Right now, I haven't got a, um, a, a package to deal with that. I, I, there's no set price to, to you know, to, to, to converse with me. I haven't got that in place because right now, my service is, you know, I'm offering that... For, to my people for free. However, probably during, you know, towards the end of the year, when I, I've, I relocate to Nigeria, because I plan to relocate to Nigeria, you know, towards the end of this year, then I will be able to, you know, put together a package where 
the, 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 the group or, or an investment club where people can come. We, we've already identified what you want. Do you want real estate? Do you want to buy land? You come to Nigeria for a week or so. I take you to, you know, where we've identified that, that is suitable for your investment. You want to start a business. You want to link up with a business that is in your industry. We get you set up with them. You want to deal with it with, with some, you know, you need some lawyers, the paperwork, we deal with that. So later on, that is the, the, the plan to, to put in place. But I need to be on the ground in Nigeria to be able to do this. But for now, in terms of land and, and real estate, you know, uh, it's, it's, um, it's by email. And then once somebody is ready, then we can take it on to the telephone conversation. Well, I love what you're doing, and I'm going to send you something, what I call my bare bones basic package, which I price things out for anyone who is serious, because people, yeah. I, I've all, I hear your prices are so expensive, but I said we have clients. We have clients that are young, old, look like you, don't look like you, whatever, but I do have a basic, if you want to seriously have a conversation, and some of that... Um, one of my guys had sent me a message and said he made, you know, it was around 40 K off three sessions. And my, the sessions were so just, you know, when you see the price, you'll say, wow, you know, it was just the most basic. And so you, it, what somebody will give you, and I'm going to send this to you because I'm not going to let these people waste your time, drive you crazy, try to drive you mad. They need to pay unless they have a skill set where it can be a barter. That means a fair exchange, people. Not that, hey, I'm a psychic and I can show you this, that, the third, or I can do, you know, even if you can do her hair and you're in, and you're in the UK, that could be a, a barter. But a lot of folks want to waste your time and they, 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 they drain us. And I know a lot of the investors right now who have their investors club, even one that's being built um, right now in Kenya, um, there's one in Togo, all from folks outside of Africa, you know, um, and, and coming in. So they need to pay if not it becomes because what happens is you say, oh, a pair of Nikes, let me what's your PayPal? Where can I send you money <laughs> and buy me <laughs> buy me some land and and i'm gonna you know and it's like and that's what we want to avoid and, and that's why i was like is there a fee because i could just see i mean has anyone tried that yet let me just send you the oh, yes. money now I've, I've been, yeah since i did diana's you know show as i said you know this is brand new and I wanted to go move slowly, slowly, but with the, with the show with Dennis, it just put me out there. So I've been flooded with a lot of emails and I've actually been <laughs> talking with Dennis every day. I said, look, these kind of inquiries I'm getting, I'm not used to this level of, um, you know, time wasters. I said, these people are, some people are asking me questions about things that are already, you know, specifically, explicitly, explained on my website and people are not reading and you know he's trying to you know um uh, uh, educate me in how to deal with this this level of of inquiries but yes you are absolutely right um actually you know when i used to uh, coach the rent to rent um um strategy back about f a few years back um, that was the system that I had. I actually had on my website. If you want to, you know, talk with me, uh, the level, this is the fee for, um, half an hour telephone conversation. If you want me to train you, this is the fee. If you want it. So I had that buffer to get myself away from people that were going to waste my time. Um, well, I didn't want to do that here, but, uh, I think that I might have to do that just to save myself from emotional, you know, turmoil. Yes. You need a system. Um, so we, th about a few months ago, we brought, um, 30 people with, with, um, with, with a client for the African diaspora news channel to Kenya. And oh. we did that because when we went on tour, um, throughout the U.S. and even the Ethiopia, the number one question was, 
when are you going to take us? How can we go? We don't want to go alone, this, that. So in every business, as you know, you solve a problem. Once folks got there, again, it's how do I purchase? How do I buy? And every country is, is different. And, and you have to you know, be able to, to navigate. Um, so you have to have those systems because also as a, as a woman, I would say everybody, but especially as a woman, these people will want to, hey, I'll meet you in Lagos. And they are, some of them are crazy. Some of these people are, I mean, literally crazy. Not, not, not the majority are cool, but even from the questions that you got, I, I know you were like, and I know they were from America. The craziest ones were from America, probably, you know, it doesn't matter what state. And you're like, really? This is the question that you have for me? And you say you want to invest in Africa? You sound like, a, you know, the biggest colonizer ever that, you know, watched Tarzan thinking that this was Africa, even though there were no black folks in Tarzan, right? But <laughs> and, and you're laughing, so I know I'm, I know I'm, I'm hitting a, a spot and I'm, I'm telling the truth. Tell me if I'm lying. You're not lying, it's because I'm, I'm, this is the emails I've experienced <laughs> just recently. Exactly, I've just experienced just that. Honestly, <laughs> and this is why a system and I and I had just sent you via WhatsApp. WhatsApp, you're welcome for the shout out. Um, what my my system is because time wasting. We've done it more than anybody for for the past almost twenty years, and I don't want to waste any more time. I don't have that much more time to waste, and my kids need me. My wife needs me. You know, there's too much going on. But yes, it has to be a system. And, 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 and I just, I want to hear about it, you know, and be like, okay, Kellen, I put this in place because I think all the investors need to know each other. Um, yeah. And there can be the checks and balances and we can really have, with unity, we all win is my hashtag. So, You're right. so uh, let's go into, you, you, had, you had talked about, you know, you're a real estate expert. Um, you've made your money in real estate but also you see opportunities, you've seen them in America, you've seen them in Africa. What are some of the things people should be thinking and some of the skill sets that people should be bringing to Africa that might not be as valuable in the UK or in America that you think would be you know, just great in uh, Nigeria specifically? Oh my goodness, honestly, when you visit Nigeria and even any country in Africa, you realize that whatever skills you've got at the moment is viable over there. And whatever skills you have, when you go to the motherland, you can build a business around it, no matter what it is. It doesn't matter. You can be uh, a garbage collectioner you can come in and then build a system where you can work with the, with the local government and just deal with their, with their collection. You can be a nurse, you can have a nursing school. You can be uh, a cleaner, you can be, have your cleaning you know, um, business. You can be a nanny, you can be your nanny system. You can be a teacher, you can build a school. I mean, the possibilities are endless. And the thing is, the thing is, people look at Nigeria and think, oh, this is a poor country. Oh, no, 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 no. There are a lot of wealthy people. Most of the, the, the wealthiest people are actually in, in, in Africa, and a lot of them are in Nigeria. When you look at the, the tourism, for example, when you look at the tourism of Dubai, most of those people are from Nigeria. Mm. And when you go, when they go to Dubai, you're, you're, you're looking at, you know, they're spending thousands of pounds in a, in a weekend to go to Dubai. So people have got the, the means to pay for the best. But we need people that can come in and create that best with, uh, with the philosophy and the, and the knowledge of, 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 of of business acumen because a lot of people that are maybe brought up in Nigeria don't have that business sharpness where you know when you open for business it means you're open for business 
<laughs> you know, yeah. when you say, um, I'm going to be at the office from 9 till 5 o'clock, you must be, you are supposed to be in the office from 9, for, from 9 to 5. So that kind of business sharpness and acumen is not always, it's not always there. We'll call it African time, Nigerian time, whatever. But when you come from the diaspora and you have that, you know, dealing with people, you know, business-wise and fairly, people love that. People appreciate having that service. So whatever skills you've got, and if you're thinking about making money, because this is about, you know, making money and, and solving problems, come to Nigeria because Nigeria, we've got a lot of problems that need solving and we need people that, are, that, that mean business. A lot of people, when they think about Africa, they think about, I'm just, I'm going to retire in Africa. Well, when you're 65, 69, bloody hell, you're too old to do anything. So don't come at that age. Please come when you're young. Come when you are in your, in your maybe in your 20s if you can. If you're, if, you're, if you're smart enough, come in your 20s. But come in your 30s, 40s and build. Because that is when you've got the, 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 the stamina and the, and, the, and the passion and the burning fire, you know, to, 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 to be on a mission and build something and build a legacy. And believe me, what you build in, 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 in Africa or in Nigeria, no KKK is going to come down and burn it down for you. Mm-hmm. It's yours. And when you involve the community in your business, the community will be the ones protecting your business because they know that they depend on your, on your business for them. So don't be afraid to, to come and, and consider, you know, you know, the motherland as a viable place for you to build whatever passion you've got, whatever dream you've got. Consider, you know. So everything so. is everything is open. You just see so much. And, you know, and if you don't like anything that she says and you happen to just see her on the street, don't approach her. It might be her twin sister. Um, you know, <laughs> <laughs> if, if you have, you know, yeah. It, 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 you know, yeah, she, she has a twin out there. So, is your, is your is your sister gonna relocate with you when you go? And are, how long are you gonna stay? Is it gonna be indefinite? Are you gonna do six months on, six months off? Well, <clears throat> the plan for me right now is because um, I've got a business here, so I don't intend to close my business here. So my intention would be I would be floating between the two countries anyway. So it would be, um, you know, a few months there, a few months here, a few months there, a few months there. I'm going to be floating, so. Okay, what, what a beautiful, that's, that's beautiful. Now, and is your sister, is she on the same thing? Like, hey, let's go out there and, you know, we're, we're bringing our family. <laughs> yeah, my twin, she's my biggest, you know, cheerleader. Um, even though she, 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 she's, um, she's an accountant she's more into the, you know, she, she worked for one of the biggest, you know, uh, rail, um, rail companies in the UK. So she deals, she manages the, uh, finance accounting department. So she's more, uh, she, she sets, you know, where she is, but, um, but we're working with um, in, 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 in bringing her skills back home because she's one of those um, big brains that whichever company she works with, she's going to transform that company. She's not only an accountant, she's also a coder. So she, she writes coding to 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 and develop um uh, accounting uh, systems that will make you know her work a lot a lot easier so she's literally she writes code and then she you know she she so she's she's one of those people that needs to i, I need to find the perfect company for her to just come and then plug in into the nigerian system until i find that um she will still be She'll be here. But however, she's also an investor. She's investing back home and uh, whatever she invests, I'm the one, you know, I'm managing it for her. So we're working in tandem. Okay. And, and we don't just like to get the game. We like to give it on, on the show. And to me, it sounds like your sister, she needs to just create her own business because the one thing, you know, all throughout Africa, 
um, I used to work for the server company. And it, from Malawi to different countries, we'd be like, okay, we want to push these servers, right, to the banks, to the hospitals. These are the same type of servers Hillary Clinton and, and the government use, but nobody knows whose it is, right, who's software. And what someone told me, they said, Kellen, you know why? And these are people on the ground. They're saying no. They said because they're 65 and older. And you know what you can't do with software? You can't corrupt it, at least as easily. And I said, wow, because the server would have solved a big problem that especially this bank was having and, and make sure that, you know, everything was on the up and up. But they said that because of the corruption, they're saying no, they want to be able to control it. So it sounds like if she can code and she can do accounting, that's a business, even in America. I use my CPA because he does things that many others won't do as far as technology wise. So set up a business and say, sis, this is yours. Let's go. Don't worry. Don't worry. I've got big plans for her. She just doesn't know yet. <laughs> <laughs> I've got big plans for her, believe me, she doesn't know yet. So I'm 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 moving I'm moving her into into the idea very slowly, very slowly. So don't worry about that. Okay, okay, <laughs> yeah. You know, because the, especially for America, since they've put this ban and you know, whatever, I, I can't wait for the day America has to then beg other countries like Mexico. Can we please come over there? Nigeria, can we please get over there? We we need some resources. We need some, you know, food. Not you know. Yeah. The, the ban I actually welcome the ban. I actually I'm one of those, you know, people that actually welcome the ban because um I advocate for our people to stay home and fight over there. Um, I've been seeing, you know, a lot of people dying in the Mediterranean, you know, going through the back door, dying in the Mediterranean. And a lot of those people are from Nigeria. Um, I, you know, it, 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 they don't even need to be just, they don't even need to be Nigeria for me to feel very, you know, touched by it. They are black people, they are our people. So I, I you know, those people are the warriors. Those people are the people that, the country needs to make a change. We can't, you know, we can't allow our, the youth to run away when the old farts are sitting down there and eating on the backs of the youth. So I welcome, you know, the, the ban, and I hope that I actually wish that, you know, more countries would do that so that we will be forced to deal with our problems on the continent and the problems on the continent are the fat you know cows that just feed feast on the people and um, the people need to you know you know rebel at some point and you know when people have had enough things will go off and that's what africa uh, needs well, you, wait, don't, don't say that too much because you know Nigeria, how it goes every so many years and, you know, things happen and that rebellion do, does come. Unlike um, my wife is from Cameroon and when we went back with the kids, um, it was that, you know, you have the same president for 38 years, nothing has changed. And you have certain people that speak English, the English speakers you know, be, driving taxis with PhDs and master degree. So I can understand why people want to leave. But the problem is when they leave to these certain countries, they still a lot of times don't get a better job. Now, if you can get to the United States or the UK, things can be different. But when you go to Turkey and all they're going to, they're not even going to allow you to work at all. And, you know, they're not, you have to then learn Turkish and you, you have to run to certain places. I mean, it's, yeah, it, it, it's difficult and because I don't ever find myself to be special. I find myself to be very privileged and blessed to be able to live in certain places because to create a business in America is almost free. Like, it, like a homeless person could create a business in America if they wanted to, where in Cameroon, you can't do that. And you need $2,500 at least just to get an official license for some businesses. And if that was the case here, many folks wouldn't be entrepreneurs and America wouldn't be where it's at. So mm -hmm. 
the the global alliance can help people. I I almost want to almost shape some fees that the first conversations are free, but let's say someone says, okay, I have $5,000. I'm not an expert in this. You've been there. I'm going to buy my trip. I'm going to go on a trip. Can you help me invest my 5000 Is that a service that you would offer? Uh, mm, n- no. At the moment, um, it would be case by case. You know, what I know, my area of expertise is real estate and land. So if someone wants me to invest that for them, uh, I'm not going to take your money and, you know, use it to invest. No, you come with me, we see what you like, and then you, we deal directly with the, um, uh, the property developers or the land, you know, owners. We deal directly with them. But I'm not, I will not take money and then say, okay, I'm going to invest it here. I'm going to guide you. I want to make sure that you know what, where your money is going, you know, into. It's not, I'm not offering uh, a, like a bonds, you know, kind of service. No, I need you to learn about what you're, you know, investing in because investment is about acquiring additional knowledge. And a lot of people want to talk about invest, invest, invest. They don't know what, what it means, you know, there are different ways, the different avenues you can invest in. And whatever you're investing in, you need to learn the craft of that department. So I'm very, um, um, I'm an advocate of, you know, before you start investing in anything, get the knowledge that is necessary for you to know the in and out of that investment. I mean, when I started um, getting an interest in investment in, back in 2008, 2009, I've got a library, a library of books that I've read about investments. I started with investing for dummies. You know, I just bought that one online on Amazon for dummies. I looked at, you know, it covered different kind of investments. And I said, okay, I like that one. I like that one. I like that one. So I went out and bought more books in the areas that, that I liked. And I started learning about, you know, these areas to perfect myself, to perfect my knowledge. Then once I was ready, I started investing. I started, you know, putting my money, you know, in, in, into, into those areas. Because I'm not going to you know, hear about investment and then throw my money there without knowing the in and out, then that is foolishness. That is just gambling, you know. So anyone that wants to invest in land and real estate in Nigeria, that is my side. That is my expertise. I can do that. I can teach you. I can guide you through it. Um, That will take some time. I can guide you through it. But um, in terms of investing in other areas, you, know, you need to learn. You need to read the books. You need to, you know, seek you know, the teachers that are, you know, dealing in your arena. Right now, till the day, I still have teachers. I still have coaches that are training me in real estate. There are people that I follow online. Robert Kiyosaki is one of them. I follow his, his podcasts, you know, on YouTube. Whenever he brings out a new book, I'm reading it. You know, I still have that kind of professors, that kind of uh, of teachers that um, I'm still crafting my 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 you know my skills. So I, I I never stop learning. And and you know what? So your book has to be written. And I'm going to show you something because we just had a um, a guest on not too long ago, Miss Daniel Pierce. I'm going to connect you with her because what she's I know her. I know her. You know her. You know her already. Okay. I listen, I listen to her on uh, Boyce Watkins' um, uh, show. Okay. Are you guys connected? We're not connected at all. Okay. We're not connected at all. Y- you have to connect because what she taught me in this book, um, you know, as a consultant, you have to be well-versed and you're doing all these things. But I was not aware of um, what they call property preservation, which I don't know if Nigeria, how they, you know, the banks would foreclose on a house or anything, but that's something that if it isn't done, maybe it's not even done the way we do it, but there's always a gap. But property preservation is basically that you're keeping up the house for the banks 
like, you know, cutting the lawn and making sure people aren't breaking in. And those are things that even here, folks are like, what are you talking about? So that's why we had her as a guest. But y'all have to connect because, again, two women in real estate, different things. You could go from Nigeria, and because you speak French too, you could then jump into Cameroon real quick and say, hey, did Bia retire or die? Doesn't matter. Let me jump in here. And, you know, this is how we make the biggest impact on Africa. And we don't have to wait for the Chinese to show us how to do it. No dis to the Chinese. Absolutely. Absolutely. Speaking of... Just two uh -huh. seconds. Uh -huh. Give me two seconds. Okay. I don't know if you know, but I've written two books. No, because I would have got them. <laughs> <laughs> I've written two. This is the first one. This is the second one. Okay. And where are they at? Can we get them um, on Amazon? Yeah, you can get them on Amazon or you can get them directly on my, on the web, my website, renttorent.co.uk. And um, this, this first one was written in 2011. Mm -hmm. The second one, which is, the first one is mass, Rent to Rent, Massive Cash During a Massive uh, Crash. And the second one is the legals and skills about, you know, the strategy. So, um, so yeah, and this is a, a strategy that I'm looking to implement in Nigeria. And this is, this is to help, you know, uh, people who are starting off in real estate business to get started and make their money and then, you know, start investing for themselves because this is how, I started in real estate with zero money down, zero. Now you started with zero money down, but you know, for our long-term listeners who they, you know, this is game that we're given so people can learn. We've had Richard Blanco from the UK who um, for us, he's famous because he's on a TV here. They actually don't show on HGTV, his show, International House Hunters in the UK, he said. So he's like, nobody knows who I am, but he has a perfect beard, uh, no hair here, perfect beard, right? And he's like, in the UK, I asked him, how do you go from the UK to Spain? He was like, in the UK, we don't need a license per se to do real estate, you know? Mm. I said, what, no license? Here, you know, you need a license to braid hair, to do my locks in some states. Oh, that, I heard about that one. That is just ridiculous. That is, I heard about it, you know. Yeah. So, so, so in, in the UK, it almost seems like it's easier. So with no money down, you can start. You don't have to have a license. You guys, I almost filed asylum in, in London at one point. I love London so much. I have a London Um and, and those who watch the show know that I have a London. I have a Sydney, too. Um, but <laughs> <laughs> London and Sydney dot com. That's what I call them because that's their website. But, you know, in, in the zero to zero. So you're going to write this book on Africa soon. Should we expect it this year or next? <laughs> I'm actually writing my third book at the moment, um, which has nothing to, is not a business book. But this, the first two ones are business books. The second, the third one is um, more just a, a, a fancy side of me that people don't know. Um, I'm not so, fantasy is not nothing you know extravagant, extravagant, but it's something that is more adapted to maybe a TV show or, or, or movie or something. So writing a small a small book, you know, on, on that side at the moment. So once that is finished. I plan to, you know, continue, you know, my passion and, um, and see if a book comes out of it, then a book comes out of it. I don't, I, I, don't, I don't really plan to write books. I'm not a writer. I'm not a writer. I let everyone, I'm not a writer. <laughs> but when I've got something to tell and I want to, you know, document uh, my, my, my journey, you know, uh, I just put, the, put everything down in writing. And, um, you know, is there for anyone who wants to, wants to read to read it. And those are the bo best books to do, read, write, whatnot. I, I, I want to ask you, because I started in the beginning because you had told me something off air about Yoruba and Japanese. And do you know why they're similar? Is there some type of correlation when all the continents were together? Of, you know, do, do you have any idea why the languages are, are similar? 
I I've heard that back in the days back 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 there was some you know Japanese you know uh, adventurers that uh, took on the boat and they went out to explore the, the world. And uh, they landed, you know, on our shores and uh, they couldn't, their boat was too, you know, defect for them to go back. So they landed and then they mingled with, with our people. That is something that was told. I, I can't verify it. But what I know is that Yoruba, I don't know, I, I don't think that, you know, they brought something that they taught us. I don't. I don't think so because I believe that the civilization started in, you know, you know, on the motherland. But somebody, you know, maybe I read it in a book. I can't remember that. You know, some adventurers came. You know, ended in the on the on the shores of 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 Nigeria, and then they couldn't go back, and then they just mingled, and then just became part of our of our people. But I don't. I don't think that um, their language influenced my language i don't think so but a lot of people um when they see my name and when they see you know uh or maybe my the nigerians that we tend to have almond eyes they tend to think that we are you know related to japanese but i don't i don't know but we tend to think that my name sounds very japanese but um you know all right, we, we have to look into this because there are um, documented history that Africans were the first samurai. There's actually a book called African yes. Samurai. Yes, uh, yes, it, yes. Uh, it, absolutely, it, absolutely. I've seen the black samurai, the black uh, Japanese. Yes. I've yes. seen them. And uh, yes, yeah, the first samurais were black. And they even said that, you know, when the samurai, you know, uh, military started, the people were not considered samurai unless they have uh, the black in man's blood in them. So they were not even considered samurai unless they, 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 they've got the black blood in them. So, um, so yeah, I'm, I'm, wherever you go on the planet, you see black people. You know, I, I, I'm, this is one thing that um, I'll, I'll try to explain to our people. We don't realize how great we are. We haven't got it. We, we just allow the, the, the propaganda and the system of white supremacy to manipulate us to the extent of losing our, our identity. But when we look into history, we should feel proud. I feel pride in me when I see, when I, when I, when I see my people. I say, wow, you don't even know what blood is running through your veins. Yeah, you know. de definitely. And, and I like that you said we, because a lot of times when people push blame game, and you can see this even in relationships where people will say, oh, she didn't do this and he didn't do. No, if you read the book Extreme Ownership and if you take that and say everything is on me and how it's how I take it, because that's all I can control. But it shows mm -hmm. the more you travel, the more you see how people are alike more than they mm -hmm. are different. And that, yeah. you know, it's all, it can all, it's about tribes more than anything, because as you see, you're yeah. flooded with stuff that is just, oh, how do you help me and this and that? But it's like, wait, you might not even be part of my tribe because you want to hand out and I can help you, but help comes with, you know, it's a beneficial, it's a real relationship. If you're in a relationship and you're only getting, you putting out and they're not getting anything, you're not in a healthy relationship. I, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I want to ask you though, in, in, in rounding up, what does your community give back? You've said it throughout this whole time, but you've had so much su success. You know, I want to make sure I cover everything. And is there anything that you are doing that you haven't mentioned or that you want to do in the future that you are doing because of your success and want to give back to the community? Yeah, yeah. I mean, right from the beginning of, you know, even before I started having any successes, I've always had my my people in mind. And um, I remember when I first started the rent to rent, you know, um, a strategy back in 2011, uh, my, um, I was able to offer free coaching sessions to, to people who couldn't afford to pay for my services. Um, and um, that's just, it's just, it, it, it comes without even, even, even being asked. It's a service. If someone comes to me and, you know, they, I can see that they're genuine, genuinely 
hungry, they need the knowledge, but they cannot, you know, afford the services. I will give, I will give as much as I know that they're able to take. Because some people, you know, expect things to be given to them and they don't value it. So uh, the more, the more I can say that you can take, the more, the, you know, that's the level I will give it, I will give to you. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, when I was in my 20s, um, before, uh, when I was working in a, in, a, in a magazine, in a publication, I gave myself, I gave my time for free because I wanted to learn. So if I see somebody come to me with that energy, you want to learn, you, whatever you, you got, even if, you're, if it's your time, you give it to me, for, you know, you give it to me, I will coach you what you need to know. Um, but not, put that aside, um, on a totally different, you know, par, um, I have a, a, a charity which is called House of Mercy uh, in Nigeria where we feed, you know, um, hundreds of children and uh, we have uh, a boarding, you know, house where we board um, homeless children um, in, in Lagos. So you can, you know, this charity was founded by a very close friend of mine and our uh, family runs the, the charity in Lagos. It's called House of Mercy. Uh, we, we have, you know, uh, the, uh, the different videos on YouTube that people can have a look at. And um, if we want to support that, and, you know, in terms of, um, you know, giving whatever donation you can give, or even if it's food that you can, you can, you can give, it is there. So it, it's, it's a charity that... Um, that deals directly with people. There's no uh, buffer in between. There's no intermediary. Whatever you give goes straight to the to the to the people that handle that, that take care of the of the children. So it's called House of Mercy. You guys have gotten so much game today that you know now how and when. First, you go to the website. Go through all the beautiful blogs. See what's being done. Go binge watch the YouTube. Make sure that you have a full understanding before you send an email, because when you want to invest, that's not the House of Mercy charity. You're going to find that there's going to be some invoices, some packages on her site shortly, because there's only so much time in the day. Tao, I thank you for coming on, and you and I, we're going to talk briefly off air because I want to even, um, I, I mean, I just want to highlight what you're doing and so excited for you. So thank you and blessings. Thank you very much. <laughs>